Put on your war paint, sugar. We're doing another project. It's July now, so we're making a jack-o'-lantern. I have this small foam pumpkin from last Halloween, so we're going to use that. They have this grody watermark type thing here on the bottom, but acetone and alcohol are only taking off the orange paint. I wanted to use the bottom of the pumpkin as the top of the lantern, so I tried to cover it up. I still don't have orange paint, so I tried to use watercolor pencils, but it came out bad. I want to make sure that the face I put on turns out correct and symmetrical, so I'm going to draw it first. I make a rough approximation of how tall and wide I can make the design, and draw half of the face. I'm giving it a smile with trapezoid shaped teeth and triangle eyes that point down. When I think it looks alright, I can cut it out. At this point, I had an interruption and I forgot that I wanted the design to be on upside down on the pumpkin, so it's right side up. I'm going to trace the design onto the pumpkin so the paper doesn't get in the way when I'm carving it. For these pumpkins, I use watercolor pencils and oranges and yellows. They can be removed with water and anything that won't come off should blend in enough to where it's not too noticeable. I cut it out with various tools and I thin down the edges on the inside. It's an obscure design, so I forgive that you don't recognize it. This is the face of the pumpkin ghost enemies from Sonic Heroes and Shadow the Hedgehog. Being such, I'm going to make this more than you bargained for and craft its little body too. I bent this wire up in something along the lines of the shape that I wanted for the cape. The fabric of the cape is going to be this quote unquote silk from this dollar store pillowcase that I have. Ideally, the cape that I make with this will hold up the pumpkin so that it looks like it's floating like the ghost in the games. I cut out about how much I need with ample seam allowance. Remember that you can always cut off the excess seam allowance after you sew it up. I made these allowances long so that I can sew it up around the wire to make it invisible, and because I completely expected this material to fall apart with barely a breath, but it didn't do that. Of course I had to sew it up all by hand. To be honest, I thought sewing anything would hurt as much as the last time I sewed fleece, but the two stitch jobs I did since then hurt significantly less than that one did. Still, I take a moment to rest every time that I need it. The wire frame is a little too weak, so I'll add some more support with another wire. I like to wrap my wires up so that there's no chance that they go anywhere.
I want the wire that the pumpkin sits on to be covered by fabric and it turns out that the excess of this piece that I cut out fits over the area again basically completely so I'll just sew it up all the way around to hide the wire. I knew going in that this wire probably wasn't going to be able to hold up the pumpkin with just an attempt at counterbalancing, so I have these glass stones to make the bottom of the cape heavier. I tried to work around them while they were inside the cape, but I found a way to be able to just add them into the pocket later. This all works out good enough, but I want it more secure, so I used this fabric fix to glue it to the wire on the inside of the cape. Luckily, the glue doesn't discolor the fabric or show up through it, which is another happy surprise. I still keep it thin and only apply it so that it just sticks. Overall, I'm really happy with how the cape turned out, even if it doesn't always support the pumpkin completely. This little ghost has one more detail. They have this weird glowy target basically where the body should go. It's kind of see-through so I use a plastic blue folder to make it. I want it to be proportional to the pumpkin and it looks like the size of a disc is good enough for the outline. I sketch out the bullseye roughly, I'm not too concerned about it. I use a sharpie to trace the plan onto the plastic and cut it out. I can erase the ink later with alcohol. I want it to glow since I have the paint for it, but I'm going to paint on some white as a base. The center is kind of lighter so it works for that too. I paint on a few layers so it's so that it's opaque and give it a coat of blue paint to help the glow come through. I paint on a few layers of the glow in the dark so that it shows up nicely. To attach it, I'll poke out a little hole at the edge and loop a little ring wire onto it. I glue the wire to the cape and secure it with a staple. I'm worried that the pumpkin will fall off the lid that I cut out, so I'll trace out a couple little circles to dig holes to glue in a magnet. I heard that hot glue could demagnetize them, but these ones still work. I want them to stay put, so I glue a piece of paper over both magnets and manually stick in a staple for good measure. You might be wondering why the pumpkin does have this lid to it when it's synthetic anyway. Well, it's easier to put the lighting in it this way, but also it gives me an access point to the face from the inside so I can glue in some thin plastic to be like windows. I cut out only as much as I need. You can probably use cellophane of some kind, like wrapping papers that you can get, but I have this yellow plastic bag that I'm going to use. This helps disperse the lighting and prevents the light source from being seen from the outside. Actually, the pumpkin ghost eyes look more white than yellow, and this plastic serendipitously has a white side to it. So I'll glue it from the inside with a white side looking out. The yellow on the other side will glow through and give it a nice tint. I'm going to use regular white glue on this. I did this procedure to a lantern before, but I used hot glue to fix the plastic. Hot glue sticks fast, but it's hot to handle in the weird positions that you need, and it can burn through the plastic. There's also a residue that you might not be able to get rid of that will affect the way that it glows too. For this project, I decided to try the white glue. Because I only thinned the walls of the eyes and teeth a little bit, there's a gap between the plastic and the edge of the pumpkin itself. I try to fix it, but this glue makes it pretty fragile. If your jack-o'-lantern has a different color glow to it, make sure to paint the bare foam in the same color before you put in the plastic, just so that you don't risk getting the paint on the plastic and obscuring the glow. When you're happy with it, test it out to make sure it looks all good. And you're done. <laughs>